Today we're gonna do a few experiments with dry ice. So I got here 13 kilograms for 10 euros and I was pretty happy that I found a factory near where I live who make those dry ice pellets. And um, first I show you how to store them. I put them in a bath because it's well isolated and then I put a few of these things on it so that it's a bit protected like this and so it's nicely isolated and it keeps for around three days in the bath and if you want you can wrap it in uh, a kind of space blanket to protect it from the heat and so it uh, keeps cold for a longer time now this first experiment is pretty popular. You just um, put some hot water in your wash basin and then you add maybe one of this of dry ice. You see? And then it makes this nice vapor, vapor of CO2. Only do that in a well ventilated area or you won't get any air. And you can just do this and it looks awesome. Isn't that cool? I love this. Here you can see the dry ice floating around. There you see. That's the dry ice. Yeah, and that's the experiment. Now I put a lemon in a container with some dry ice overnight and I hope that I can destroy it with a hammer now. Oh yes. And you can see that it's frozen. It's minus 80 degrees cold. And um, that's how it looks. A frozen lemon. Isn't it cool? What's interesting is that the lemon keeps cold for a very long time, so it's maybe already five minutes here, and I can still break it, and it breaks in thousands of pieces, and that's just frozen lemon. Here I put a rose in some dry ice, and after a few minutes it's hard. You know, it's like the rose in liquid nitrogen experiment, but it's much cheaper. And now, when you hit it with a hammer, it breaks like glass. And it sounds like breaking glass. That's just so cool. And it's sharp. Now, another cool thing with dry ice is that you can cool your beer or your fruits and it even freezes them so it's perfect for summer to make smoothies or things like that okay this is uh, a 1.5 liters plastic bottle and I filled it with warm water and added some dry ice to it and I hope it'll explode oh! You can make some very cool effects when playing with dry ice outside because it makes those clouds and that looks just awesome. Here I've got um, in the kitchen cooking hot water on gas flames. So the blue flames are gas flames. It's a gas stove. And I want to see if I can extinguish the flames with some dry ice when I put it in the hot water. So let's try that. Oh, that looks cool. It 
Isn't that nice? It's like a avalanche of dry ice or CO2 gas. And yeah, the flames don't burn anymore. There are no flames. Now let's try if we can extinguish all the flames. So I turned all the plates on. I hope you can see the blue flames. Now I put some dry ice in here. Yeah, this one doesn't burn anymore. This one neither, and this doesn't burn anymore too. So I think it worked. And that's why dry ice and CO2 gas can be pretty dangerous. Because imagine the flames is you then you've got a problem if you can't breathe anymore. Now another cool thing about dry ice is that you can if you want you can handle it, it with your bare hands because of the Leidenfrost effect. So what happens is that your hand is so hot that a thin layer of CO2 gas is produced on which the dry ice pellets float if you want. And so your hand does never touch the dry ice just when you push it when you squeeze it hard then it hurts because it's pretty cold you can easily showcase the Leidenfrost effect if you put some dry ice pellets on a hot pan like this one and you can see that the particles move very easily and that's because of the thin CO2 gas layer between the pan and the pellets and um, it's a bit like um, an air hockey table, you know, where you can move very easily. And that's the same thing, in fact. Now, here I added some dry ice together with water and in a beaker. And an interesting thing happens because if you check the pH value, you can find out that it's acid. Now, we're at a pH value of around 6.5. It's a bit acid and that's because of the carbonic acid which is produced when you um, mix CO2 together with water. If you put dry ice with the help of a funnel in a balloon it um, inflates automatically without putting some air in it. So you can close it and then slowly it will inflate because um, the solid uh, so uh, CO2 makes it's getting a gas and so the balloon inflates it inflates even faster when you keep it in your hand because your hand is hot and so it's getting a gas easier so you can watch it grow isn't that cool the balloon is completely inflated with co2 gas now there's no solid dryers in it anymore and you will find out that it falls down much faster than normal balloons that's because CO2 gas is uh, much heavier than all of the compounds in our usual air we breathe. And it's pretty fun because it's that unusual that a balloon falls down like this, like a stone nearly. Now this is not exactly the dry ice bubble experiment, but it's pretty similar. So I've got a beaker with some warm water and I add some soap. You, you stir it a bit. And now when you add dry ice, you can make some bubbles. And there are so many versions of the normal dry ice bubble experiments on YouTube that I didn't film that. But I think that's cool too, isn't it? Those big bubbles. Ha! <laughs> I love the... It's like a volcano. That's cool. <laughs> okay, now I'm gonna put one kilogram of dry ice in the pond. Let's see what happens. Oh yes. Water is covered. The whole pond is covered with CO2 gas. Oh, that looks nice. You see the flowers there, that's so cool. Nice. Uh, 
I hope it's not too cold for the fish. <laughs> it's just so awesome to play with a glass with warm water and some dry ice in it. But can somebody of you maybe explain me why my dry ice floats on the water? Because usually it should sink because it's heavier than the water, it's, it has a higher density. But um, I have to push it down to get it under water and it floats up on the surface and I don't know why. <laughs>